Hello everyone, it's Crystal. I hope everyone is doing well. Today I'm here to discuss basic sewing supplies and basic quilting supplies. The reason I'm doing them together is because if you start sewing and you decide that you want to start quilting, the basic sewing supplies will be a good foundation for if you decide to start quilting, machine quilting. I know some people do hand quilting. Um, the very first quilting class I took, it was a hand quilting class and I don't like sewing by hand. So that's not something that I can discuss. So the first thing you need if you want to start sewing, I know a lot of people decide to start a new craft in January you need a sewing machine. I recommend a basic sewing machine. I will insert a picture of my first sewing machine right here. When I decided that I wanted to start sewing in the summer of 2016, uh, I am a serial crafter, so whenever I start a new craft, I start slow, I buy inexpensive items just in case I don't stay with the craft, then I haven't spent a lot of money on a new craft. Because if I start a new craft and I don't like it, then I gift the supplies to someone else. So I decided that I wanted to start sewing. I selected an inexp inexpensive sewing machine. And my husband actually bought it for me as a surprise. So my first sewing machine was a brother sewing machine. It has 17 stitches. And that was enough to get me started to see whether or not I would like it. So the next thing you need are needles. So I have, these are basic needles. I like the Schmetz brand. This pack of needles has size 70, 10. There's the United States size and then there's the international size. So it's 70 slash 10. There are four of those needles in here. 80 slash 12. There are th four of those needles in here. And then 90 slash 14. And there were two needles in this pack. And I, once I start using a a needle. I keep it on this needle organizer. I got it from Michael's several years ago. It was on clearance. So there's universal needles, which is a good start if you're just starting out. Microtex and Sharp, that's a, a specific type of needle. Ballpoint Jersey. Ballpoint Jersey needles are good if you are sewing knit fabric. If you're doing garments and you're doing a knit blouse, a knit skirt, a knit dress, knit pants, then you want a ballpoint slash jersey needle. Denim, jeans, this is usually a thick needle, like I, I made a denim skirt. So once I use a needle, I put it this way into my needle organizer. So in this comes with the needle organizer. This lets me know that my current needle in my machine is a 9014, which is underneath here. And then a leather needle. I made a I made a lanyard and ID holder. It was um faux leather. So it was a 100 slash 16, a really big needle. So I only so I have, still have some left. That's, when they're pointing this direction for me, that means I haven't used it. So I used this one when I made my organizer, my ID holder, excuse me. Then there's embroidery needles. I do have an embroidery machine and I will have a video about basic embroidery supplies. I have that separately, but I keep my embroidery needles in a separate location. Top stitching needles, quilting needles. I don't have any right now. I need to order some. Um, the last quilt I did was in August and it's December now. So I haven't done a quilt in several months. 
hem stitch needle, twin triple needle. I do have some right here. I was, uh, my current machine will take these needles. My very first machine would not take uh, twin needles, but I played around with this. When I first got the needles, I did some stitching to see, because it's different widths. Like that's one width, and these are slightly further apart. So this lets me, so I did some practice to see how it looks. And then long arm needles, I don't have a long arm yet, but when I do get my long arm, I'm probably gonna store my needle separately. Stretch needle, that's good for if you're doing um, like exercise, clothing, that kind of thing. Metallic needle if you're working with lame or other lame type of fabrics. So that's the first thing you need. Once you get your sewing machine, stock up so on some needles. My recommendation is to start with these universal ones in this pack so you can have a variety. If you're working on thin material like chiffon, then you want like the 70-10. Cotton, then 80-12. If you're quilting on your machine, then you want the 9014. For thread, I use 100% cotton thread. I use Oro Fill thread and I store it in this Oro Fill box. These are just ponytail holders I got from Dollar Tree. I just wrap it around and then I match. I think they come 24 in the pack. So I wrap the bobbin is the same color as the thread so that I know that they match. So it's easy for me to find. So, and then I keep it in this Orofill box. I usually use white thread. I do mostly quilting. I do make some garments occasionally. And then I would use the color of the thread to match my garments. But when I do quilting, I do white thread for my piecing and then if I quilt or if I do applique I really like to do applique I make sure that my thread matches the applique piece applique is when you take one fabric and you sew it onto another fabric and the, the fabric the small fabric is when I make sure that that small fabric matches my my thread. And you need different types of scissors. So I'm going to show you the scissors that I started with. So these are all Fiskars brand. That, that's actually my favorite type of scissor. Um, I use this, these scissors right here. I use these for fabric. And if I'm cutting some kind of ribbon, they're very sharp and they're, and they're fairly long. I use these snips for cutting thread. I keep them right next to my sewing machine to cut any kind of thread, um, thread tails. And these are pinking shears. When you're sewing cotton fabric, if the raw edges are not, if you don't have a serger, which is another discussion, when you, when you have the raw edges of your seams, if you don't have a serger, it's good to have pinking shears to cut the fabric so that when you wash your garment or wash your item, it won't fray in the washing machine. So you should at least have one pair of scissors to, for cutting fabric. The snips is sort of extra, it's nice to have. These pair of snips actually came with a pair of scissors. So I was, so I was able to kill two birds with the snips. So, and I also use a coupon when I, when I shop. And these, I use a coupon. I think I got these from Joann's. I think I got all three from Joann's, but I used a coupon. So those are your scissors. 
You need an iron. Right now, I use the Oliso Smart Iron. This is the foot when you when you iron and then you let go, these come out so that you don't have to keep doing like this each time that you finish ironing. So I have shoulder issues, so um, I, I needed that kind of iron so that I wouldn't burn my ironing board and um, also to save my shoulder because I do a lot of ironing. But the Oliso Smart Iron, that is a good, that is a good investment. And when I was taking classes out of the house, I would take my travel ironing board. I made this ironing board. It is, let's see, 18 by, 14 by 18. And this is just, this cover is a fat quarter that I had. This matches my decor in my room. And I just had a piece of plywood that I got from Lowe's. I think it's a three quarter inch plywood. And this is just some felt just to cover up the back of the board. And I have a staple gun and I just stapled the fabric. There's some batting underneath for, cause I'm a quilter. So I can show you what batting looks like. So there's the fat quarter. There's a few layers of batting, fold it over and staple it. And then I just glued this felt on top just to look, make it look more finished. But if you have a traditional ironing board, that works as well. But we only have one ironing board in our house. So if I need to use, if I need to go to a, an event, a quilting class, I take this with me. And if I'm doing, like I did some improvisational quilting. So it was a lot of cutting, iron, cutting, sewing and ironing. So I, I set up a, a triangle. I had my sewing machine in the middle. I had this on my right side and then I had a small cutting board on my left side. I can show you. I have this small cutting board that I cut cutting mat that I used is 12 by 18. I use this when I go to different classes. 12 by 18 and it's good for cutting um, especially if you're doing improvisational quilting because you're doing a lot of cutting instead of getting up and down, up and down, set up a triangle work location. And then that goes to rulers. If you, my suggestion, this ruler probably doesn't even fit in the entire frame. It's six and a half inches wide and it's 24 where is it? Here it is. There's the end. 24 inches long. So if you can only get one ruler, my suggestion, and this is the Omni Grid brand. I like this brand of rulers. All my rulers, all of my basic rulers are Omni Grid. They have yellow and black marks, and the numbers are easy to read. And then there's the half an inch. So if you're a quilter, it has the seam allowance built in for your piecing. If you decide that you want to do, if you want to start sewing garments and you buy commercial patterns, I bought these washers from Lowe's. Um, I have about 30, 35 of them in this, in this case. And this is good to hold your pad, your paper, because patterns are, if you buy commercial patterns, they're tissue paper. So you can put your, put your weights, I use these as pattern weights, put them on top of the tissue paper so that when I'm cutting the fabric, the tissue paper won't move because it's fairly light. So you don't want, you know, any wind or as you're cutting around, you don't want the tissue paper to flap open. So these are, I think they were 50 cents each. I, I would buy maybe um, five or 10 at a time if I was at Lowe's just to add to them. If you're interested, this is a good size. This is a two inch diameter for the, 
the circle, and the UAJ washers. Flat on this side. They're slightly rounded on this side. And they're a good size. And they, they are heavy once they are together. And pins. If you want to do pins or clips, they got a few choices. I wanted to show you. I use... I used to use pens, but then I was getting injured with my pens. So of course, now I have ba band-aids in my sewing room. <laughs> so it's, I have two types of pens. These pens are for woven fabrics and they're fairly long because I do a, I do projects and I do quilts. So I don't use them as often now because I have clips, but you have regular straight pens. And these pins are called ballpoint pins. Like I mentioned previously, if you do, if you sew with knit fabrics, you need a certain type of needle in your sewing machine. But if you are also sewing or making some kind of knit fabrics to keep the pieces together, you need ballpoint needles. So if you don't use clips, so I keep them separate. And um, I make sure, and I actually keep this in a drawer so to make sure that I don't use them when I don't need them. And then I have these clips that I use when I'm doing projects. Those are my large clips. These are my smaller clips. I use those. Um, I was doing in the spring and the summer, I was making a lot of mass for the for COVID, I was making masks and I was giving them away. So I was using these to keep my fabric and elastic together as I was making my projects. So I have a bunch of those. I keep them in this jar here so that I can see them. So that's all the basic supplies. There's one more thing. If you make a mistake, you need a seam ripper. My sewing machine, my basic sewing machine actually came with a seam ripper, but I needed something a little longer. So that's a seam ripper if you make a mistake or you have an error in your sewing. So that's, that's a definite. If this is a heat, a heat friction pen, so you write, you can write on your fabric. And then when you iron the fabric, the mark disappears. So this comes in a variety of colors. I have this in purple, green, I have this orange. I think I have a fourth color, but this is good if you need to mark something and um, you, want the, you don't want the marks to be permanent. And a tape measure. Sometimes you need to measure, like sometimes when I make a skirt, I need to see where I want the skirt to fall. So I would use this tape measure. I will hold it to my waist and then let it fall down to this end. And then say, then if I pick the length I want, and I say, okay, I want a 29 inch skirt from waist to wherever 29 inches falls. Then I would add my hem and I will add my waistband if I'm doing an elastic waistband. You Generally, you work backwards when you want to, um, you decide where you want to end and then you work backwards. You have to add in your seam allowance, add in your hem, et cetera. So, but, so a good, if you know you want to make garments, a tape measure is good. This is a 60 inch tape measure. So that is basically it for sewing. One thing to keep in mind before you start shopping is what kind of space will you have available? My, when I started sewing, my sewing machine was on a six foot folding table. I have expanded my area since then, but I had to keep things, keep my cutting mat, my sewing machine, and my little ironing board all on a six foot table. So make sure you know what your space considerations are, what your confinements are. If you have to, if you have to pack up after each time you sew, if you're using the dining room table, 
then you need to make sure you have a a bag for your sewing machine you know preferably one with wheels because it can sewing machines can they may start off light but if you have to add all of your notions and everything in the bag that could get a little hefty so save your back get a bag with some wheels if you need to pack up after each sewing event. So for quilting, I have since upgraded my sewing machine and I will insert my new a picture of my new sewing machine here. And when you want to quilt, first you need fabric. So this is some cotton fabric I have. These are called fat quarters. A yard of cotton fabric is generally 44 inches wide. And one yard is 36 inches. So if you take a quarter of that piece, 36 by 44, you get 18 by 22. So that's what this fat quarter is. It's 18, I'm not gonna unfold it completely, but it's 22 inches long and 18 inches wide. So that's a good way, an, ex an inexpensive way to get your cotton stash. You can build up your cotton stash by buying fat quarters. Sometimes these are Kona solids. I really like Kona, K-O-N-A. They're by Robert Kaufman. I really like those solids. They're bright, um, they have even co color, and they're not too expensive. You can also buy a fat quarter bundle. This is a fat quarter bundle I bought from Blueprint before they came, went turned back to Craftsy. So um, I think there are 30, 30 or 40 in here. I like bright colors. If I was making a quilt, I would probably pick out one of these fat quarters that would be my my focus fabric, and then I would pick some solids to coordinate. So once again, this is um, a fat, fat quarter bundle. They come in different sizes, but just so if you're shopping, you can buy individual fat quarters, 18 by 22 inches, one, which is one quarter of a yard of cotton fabric or you can buy a fat quarter bundle this I think it has 40 in here some fat quarter bundles are smaller so once you make your quilt top you use a quarter inch seam so ideally you can buy a presser foot I have a brother sewing machine my first one and my current one are brothers and this the presser foot clips on so I bought this, this is an aftermarket presser foot. It's a quarter inch presser foot and it has to guide so that my fabric will go along this guide to give me a quarter inch seam allowance. You also need needles. When I'm piecing, I usually use 80, 12 needles. If I'm quilting on my sewing machine, I use 90, 14. So this is called a walking foot. There are feed dogs on the, on the foot so that you can grab your quilt sandwich. Once you finish your quilt top, you will have, and you decide you're going to quilt it on your sewing machine, you will make your quilt sandwich. Your quilt sandwich is your top fabric your bottom fabric, and a piece of batting in between. Here's a piece of batting, I just want you to see it. Like one side is smooth, this is 100% cotton batting. One side is smooth, the other side is a little rough. So that would be your quilt sandwich. Your top, your batting, and then your bottom. You would make your quilt sandwich. I have, quilting safety pins I use and I start in the middle of the quilt top and I go to one edge, come back to the middle, go to the other edge, go to the middle, 
go to the right, come back to the middle, go to the left, and put my safety pins in to secure my quilt sandwich so that when I'm quilting my quilt on my sewing machine, the layers don't shift. So that's another, if you decide you want to start quilting, you need some safety pins. There's a spray adhesive, but if you don't have good ventilation, I don't recommend you buying the spray adhesive. So if you're going to quilt your quilt on your sewing machine, I recommend getting a walking foot. This has a guide. You can do straight quilting with straight line quilting with a walking foot. You can line up this guide on the edge and sew straight. You can line up this guide on previous lines of sewing. So that's that would be a separate, this would not come with a basic sewing machine. And in terms of batting, this is 100% cotton. There is polyester batting, there's thick batting. I've bought thick batting when I make my French memory boards. So it all depends on what the purpose of your quilt will be. Whether it's sometimes for baby quilts, you might like a little fluff with that. So it depends on what the final use will be. So this is a piece of batting. I buy my batting in bolt on on bolts. I think it's a a nine yard bolt, and it's ninety six inches wide. So I buy it through the mail. So it comes in this off white color, and I also have this white color as well. So my suggestion is if you're doing a quilt and you have dark fabric, you know navy, black, etc., that you buy black batting so and when you're cutting fabric for quilting here are some rotary cutters this is a 45 millimeter rotary cutter i use this for cutting my fabric this is a 60 millimeter rotary cutter i use this for squaring up my quilt once it's once i've quilted it so all three layers the top the batting and the back after I quilt it, I use this to square it up. And then this is an 18 millimeter, excuse me, this is a 28 millimeter rotary cutter. I use this if I'm going around curves. Sometimes you need something small to fit around the curve. So, and I use this, this is Aurifil. This is my favorite type of thread. This is white cotton thread. This is a 6,400 60, 6, yards, 6,452, something like that. So over 6,000 yards. Uh, so I won't need to, I won't need to replace this anytime soon once I open it. So, so that's, well, once you know what kind of quilt you're going to make, these are the pieces that you need. So for designing a quilt, when I first started designing my quilts, I would use good old fashioned graph paper and I would draw it out. I don't have any examples in here. All right, I did have. So I have two examples that just happen to happen nearby. I made a quilt in July. I called it the Summer Flavors Wall Quilt. Um, I made, I'll, I'll insert a picture so that you can see the finished product, finished project. I made popsicles. So I made three different styles. And I figured out, like, here's my legend. One of these blocks equals a half an inch. And I wrote it all out. And just so I could see it visually, I'm a visual learner. So I needed to see it on paper. I do have quilting software. I'll show you what I have. But I wasn't able to get to my computer. So having graph paper and drawing it out will... um 
will help you visualize how and do the math. So this is another, I made an advent calendar, advent candle wall quilt in 2019. So there are four Sundays in advent. So once I figured out, I know the candle, I didn't have to do the rest, but the first week I had one candle. The second week I had two candles. The third week I had three candles and the fourth week I had four candles. And I will insert a picture of that finished quilt as well. So once I figured that out, I decided the colors. I actually have a seminary degree. I have a master of divinity degree. So I referred to one, one of my classes. I still have my textbooks from seminary. So I referred to one of the textbooks about the different seasons for Christianity and decided what colors I would use. You'll see on the finished quilt, the colors I used and et cetera. And that, that is because I did the research and referred to, yeah, I did it in 19 November. So if I can't get to my computer for whatever reason, good old fashioned graph paper will help you design your quilts. But when I can get to my computer, I use Electric Quilt 8 quilting software. I bought this for myself as a a, um, a birthday present. My birthday is in April. So in April of 2020, I bought this for myself. And it's, it's actually easy to use. And um, you can design your quilt. It tells you how much fabric you need and the different colors. It gives you, I believe it gives you cutting instructions. Um, I haven't used it a whole lot, but if you are at the point that you want to design quilts, I highly recommend Electric Quilt 8. So I also get, I also get inspiration from social media, from Instagram, from Pinterest, I'll just follow some hashtags about quilting. I am a member of the Modern Quilt Guild. I'm an individual member. I don't really have time to go to guild meetings. It just logistically, it didn't fit in my schedule. But when I, I there are two quilt guilds that I follow, the Central Jersey Modern Quilt Guild and the Northern Jersey Modern Quilt Guild. I'm on their mailing list. So when they offer classes, um, this is pre-COVID, when they offer classes for people who are not in the guild and my space and my schedule was free, I made a point to go to their classes because I, I enjoy learning all types of things. And I will I will share some pictures of of quilts I made in September. Yeah, September of 2019. I attended a class that was taught by Tim Natar. It was sponsored by the Central Jersey Modern Quilt Guild. And it was about making map quilts. That was a lot of fun. I'll show you my map quilt. So I suggest social media, follow some hashtags. And finally, quilt magazines. I subscribe to this Quilt Maker magazine. American Patchwork and Quilting Magazine, and Quilting Arts Magazine. I get these magazines to have some inspiration. Um, like I was reading one of these magazines yesterday and I got inspiration to make a quilt for a friend of mine who's having some health issues. So I'm going to start working on that this week. So that's another source of Another source of uh, inspiration, magazines, Quilting Arts, Quilt Maker, American Patchwork, and Quilting. These are just three that I subscribe to. One thing to keep in mind, if you have a basic sewing machine and you want to start quilting on it, you need to see whether or not your feed dogs can be lowered. If your feed dogs cannot be lowered, you will not be able to do free motion quilting. That's another discussion for 
that's a discussion for another day, but that's something to keep in mind if you decide that you do want to start quilting. You may need to just do straight line quilting with the walking foot and the guide, or you may send your quilts out um, to the spa, quote unquote, that's what we call it. If you send your quilt out to someone to quilt it professionally. I've never sent my quilt out professionally. Um, I do all my, I do my own quilting. I have, I will show you my current sewing machine and it has a lot of features. The feed dogs do lower, so I can do free motion quilting. I'm not good at it. That's why I want to do a long arm. I want to buy a long arm because with free motion quilting on a sewing machine, you move the fabric around. The needle is stationary, so you move the fabric around. So that's like writing, but you're moving the paper. With a long arm machine, you're moving the actual needle around. And that's, I'm actually better at that. I took some classes in 2019, and that's when I realized that yes, because I had been thinking about getting a long arm, but I wasn't sure. But I took a, two long arm classes September 2019, I went to a quilt show and um, that's when I realized, okay, I can do long arm quilting. That's better for me. I get better results. So a lot of things to keep in mind. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. I will share some pictures of some of the quilts I've done. Feel free to visit Interwoven Creations by Crystal.com. And then I have a page of the quilts that I have made. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Have a great day. Happy crafting.